Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, October 10th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Honolulu, Hawaii. And today, well, a Microsoft Patch Tuesday. So let's start with this. According to my count, we have 48 vulnerabilities being addressed by these updates. In addition, there is an advisory regarding the Microsoft Office Defense in Depth update. Now, there is interestingly no Flash update this month. We had a Flash update a week or so ago, but no Flash update from Adobe today. Out of these vulnerabilities, three were known prior to the patch being released and a fourth one had already been exploited. The exploited one is a privilege escalation vulnerability in Windows 32K and that's sort of one of those kernel driver issues. Now the vulnerability that was probably published the most was this Jet Database Engine vulnerability. That one hasn't been exploited yet and exploitation of it would also be sort of tricky so not really surprised that we haven't seen that in the wild yet. There are also some Microsoft Exchange remote code execution vulnerabilities. When I saw this first, I was a little bit worried about this, uh, but uh, this is really more of these DLL loading issues. So again, uh, not really all that easy and likely to see this exploited. Sort of an interesting vulnerability in particular, since Microsoft thinks it's likely to get exploited, is a security feature bypass in Device Guard. Device Guard can be used to really lock down a Windows 10 system and prevent unauthorized code from running. So a lot of enterprises start to rely on that. So definitely apply this patch if Device Guard is an important feature for you. Probably less of an issue for home users. In general, a lot of the usual stuff, uh, some Microsoft Office vulnerabilities, lots of scripting engine issues and browser issues again. So nothing really all that outstanding. I would rate this as an average, maybe a little bit easier than average patch Tuesday. Now, while we didn't have any security updates for Flash from Adobe, we got a number of updates from Adobe, including a new Flash version, but this one really fixes just performance and feature bugs, no security vulnerability. So if you see this pop up, that's why you get this update for Flash. Security updates were released for the Adobe Digital Editions. Then we also have for Adobe Frameworker, and for the Adobe Technical Communications Suite. Also not on the list is Adobe Acrobat and PDF Reader, but again, this was another product for which we just, uh, actually I think a few days ago, had a security update from Adobe. So I'm not sure if this new trend that Adobe will publish security updates more outside of the normal scheduled patch Tuesday. I mentioned back when the Flash and the PDF uh, update happened that they really didn't seem serious enough for what we usually saw Adobe really sort of out of band updates for. And then we got yet another MageCard issue. MageCard is this group that's going around injecting JavaScript into websites in order to steal credit cards. Now, they sort of perfected a little bit the scheme of infecting third-party sites that a lot of these e-commerce sites rely on. The latest example is Shopper Approved. A Risk IQ noticed that their JavaScript code did contain the MageCard JavaScript. Now, Shopper Approved is typically used to allow customers to rate online merchants and then these ratings are often featured on search engines and the like to help you find a more reputable company. In this particular case, Shopper Approved was compromised, MageCart added their JavaScript code, and as a result, any website, any e-commerce site that used this Shopper Approved plugin, well, uh, their customer's data was potentially leaked. Took them about two days to clean it up. Now, one interesting side note 
note here is that when Risk IQ first spotted the compromise, the code that was inserted by MageCard was actually not obfuscated and the MageCard crew came back 15 minutes later and replaced this clear text code with the usual obfuscated version. Now, RiskIQ reached out to Shopper approved according to the blog post here by RiskIQ, but still looks like it took about two days to have that malicious JavaScript removed. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.